And welcome to Behind the Mic. My name is Cynthia Mwangi. Now, the one thing that we really celebrate at RMS is the extensive talent that we have. And today we are sitting here with one of the new members of the RMS brand. His name is Ayub. He's about three months into um, working with us. And the first and most important thing is to welcome him to the family and also get to learn a bit more about him, his work, where he's been, his family, his favorite songs maybe as well and if he dances why not this is behind the mic with Ayi. there are instances that where in life you stop mm -hmm. and uh, ponder about sacrificing one thing to get to the other what happens is that after you are assessed you graduate it's a whole different dynamics when you step into the media world mm -hmm. i mean many things happen because the pressure piled at the time was this coming at an election time the demand will be huge it's going to be insane. and uh, there are some requirements that uh, you would be made immediate deployment to the bombers of kenya that mm -hmm. is a national talent center yes all eyes were On nearly there yeah. how are you hi how are you Karibu sana. evening lovely to have you it's an oh yeah it's evening oh my good lord anyway welcome asante thanks for having so, me so who is are you well a lot to it and uh, uh Ayub Abdi Kadir, mm -hmm. Abdi, uh, born, bred, brought up in uh, Wadia County, mm -hmm. uh, working with the Royal Media Services, of course, glad to be uh, part of the extensive family, mm -hmm. and largely what I may term as uh, a cocktail of very diverse uh, talents that we have uh, in the company, mm -hmm. and uh, coming at a time when the country was prepping up for one of the most consequential elections in the country. Yes. And I must say that uh, I appreciate the warm hospitality and uh, the welcoming that was uh, uh, at the time when I was um, new to the company it was accorded to me from the management to my fellow colleagues. And therefore, I must uh, applaud my colleagues for what uh, I must say has been a good teamwork and an effort that was uh, extended to me at the Olive Branch. And therefore, I'm happy to be part of uh, one of the country, not one of the country's biggest media outlet. Of course, we are made up by radio stations and uh, local dialect television stations. Therefore, a family that also prides itself in professionalism. Therefore, I am part of that uh, professional family and fraternity that always uh, prioritizes uh, the most important aspects of uh, this profession, what it's all about in terms of dissemination of information and our utmost priority who are our audiences. Therefore, happy uh, to be here. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's in between the journey of education, mm -hmm. um, coming to Royal Media Services, of course, my previous workplace. Yes. And uh, very interesting stories and episodes to that effect. <laughs> okay. So starting with that, did you always want to do journalism? Yes, a passion imbued from the onset while I was at the primary school. I come from a family where my my 85, about 90, you know, was there on the 1934, 35. Yes. But going by the documents on his uh, the uh, identification documents. At, that at least has, what you have. Yeah, 87, 88, and he has been tuning to the BBC World Service, the Somali Service, for the past uh, many many years since its advent. Therefore, this always uh, provided a springboard and uh, a platform to which I had developed a passion for the profession at the primary school level. And um, by the guidance of, of course, my teachers and uh, in Wadia County uh, during my primary schooling days, this was uh, well managed up to the admission at secondary school still in Wadia County, Wadia High School. And then thereafter, the practice I did at the high school level. Uh, though there was no professional setup as such in yes. terms of practice and equipment and mm -hmm. the tooling aspect of the profession. Mm -hmm. But this was uh, a passion held at heart and the gold standard that, uh, that I set. And then at the university, of course, it was a direct pursuing oh. of, the, of the profession. Yeah. So back in high school, how exactly were you doing it? Well, uh, through imitation of radio programs, mm -hmm. because uh, those days the uh, KBC was uh, what many people are tuned to. Yes. The Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. and. Mm -hmm. uh, during break times or when uh, we are uh, uh, during our free times mostly, mm -hmm. I used to gather around a congregation 
of about 10 people who today are also professionals in their own capacities, mm -hmm. uh, doctors, I mean, uh, teachers, yes. uh, people who are working in government offices, who today when I look back to that journey and uh, what I offered then in terms of practice and then being the imitation part of what I was doing, mm -hmm. I'm uh, quite proud of uh, proud of the journey that uh, we had made all together, despite the divergence uh -huh. in terms of our subscription to our different professions. Therefore, it was more of imitation. Of course, no ethical standards in terms of the guidance right. and the confining, uh -huh. but um, something that the heart loves. But then again, you have to do it as uh, you prepare for the foreseeable future, which is the university education. Okay, so you get into university yes. and now you're fully immersed in the entire course. How was that for you? Easy, I will say. Uh, <laughs> well, you're the first person to say that. Well, easy in, in the sense that uh, whatever you desire to do, when mm -hmm. there is uh, the passion that propels it, right. I mean, there are challenges, of course. There are hurdles on the way of mm -hmm. anything. There are um, stumbling blocks on the way. Right. And of course, you mentioned to be specific how they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when uh, the driving element is uh, passion, mm -hmm. Of course, you overcome the challenges because the main goal is uh, the standard that you have set. Yes. I think with both focus and uh, vision, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately that goal is achievable mm -hmm. and somewhat it has been achieved. When I look back at my journey from university during my internship program mm -hmm. to where I am today, I look back with the utmost uh, uh, proud moment, may I say, and uh, give myself uh, a pat on the back of what I have done. having achieved so that achieved much. In life. So what was the, your biggest hurdle to say in university? Because I, mean, well, I imagine you left Bajia, yeah. then came here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How was that transition for you? Well, let me say first, I did uh, my journalism and mass communication uh, postgraduate uh, studies at Mount Kenya University and uh -huh. campus. Right. And uh, the good thing about uh, it was uh, I was self-sponsored uh -huh. um, and uh, I did pay my university. Uh -huh. So from the onset, I knew that the goal was set. Yes. But in between was, of course, uh, the financial element of mm -hmm. how you have to support your Yourself. education course. Yes. And um, I had a side hustle, may I say, mm -hmm. that uh, ensured at least for the semester period, which is made up by nine days, three months, mm -hmm. is uh, well catered for. Mm -hmm. This in the sense that uh, I had make sure in the event that uh, it might seem difficult or there is difficult or a challenge that yes. there are people who I looked up to mm -hmm. and uh, who are uh, of help to me mm -hmm. and I did so because um, I knew what I wanted mm -hmm. therefore I never wanted delay or dependency oh. on someone paying my school fees because the desire was so big and intense to the extent that I never wanted that delay to have an effect on oh. my education pro progress and, the university. On your goal, yeah. and um, many people are of help but uh, I like pointing out uh, one person who is now a cabinet secretary, I mm -hmm. wouldn't want to name him, mm -hmm. who has been of help, who mm -hmm. had uh, made phone calls to ensure that uh, I remain in class, mm -hmm. who had supported me, and who today, when he watches our news, he's proud that yeah. uh, one of his products is uh, on Kenya's number one station. I mean, mm -hmm. this has been uh, a moment where when we at times uh, meet up despite his busy schedule, mm -hmm. and which is tight, may I say. Yes. Uh, that uh, we all laugh and uh, say, yes, we have accomplished a mission. Maybe a year from where we are, or yeah, a year from where we are, there are a lot more people who had no idea where they were getting into. I could use my own experience. I walk into a radio station, I have never seen any of those things. Not a mixer, not a microphone, not a edit editing software, absolutely new. But then you have to be really, really fast and want to drive yourself as much. And I'm assuming that's the same drive you had the minute you stepped into the workforce. How was it from university straight into trying to or maybe getting a job? Well, the beauty about it is that uh, while at the university, mm -hmm. about uh, three semesters before I finished, mm -hmm. I got uh, an internship uh, opportunity in right. one of the media houses in the country uh -huh. where I eventually got employed. Right. That was in 2016. So where I worked for about uh, nine months, mm -hmm. and that was really my internship course. So I, out of my own personal uh, decision, decided to extend that volunteership yes. so that I gained more experience. And uh, the blessings that uh, accompanied this was uh, 
while still an intern, mm-hmm. I was hosting the morning show. So that was a bit oh, that about is incredible. It. Well, it, it happened in a sense that um, uh, presentation is very key mm-hmm. in this profession. Yes. It's uh, the service point of uh, what you're offering the audiences who are at home. Mm-hmm. And allow me to say that uh, in the current media world, we have no mass audience. We have segmented audience. Mm-hmm. Everyone is interested in certain aspect of this news bulletin. Mm-hmm. Maybe the dress code of the news presenter, maybe the news itself, maybe the hairstyle, maybe the color of the tie of the dress, mm-hmm. maybe the taglines of uh, the news bulletin. Right. So that's why we have segmented audience and it's a point that has been agreed upon by media scholars. Mm-hmm. So there's no such mass audience or mass viewership. People are segmented because different people want different aspects different things, of the bulletin. Yes. So mm-hmm. after that, I did the morning, sh- the morning shows, mm-hmm. went back to the university, graduated in 2017. Mm-hmm. I dare say the 7th of 7th, 7th of July, uh-huh. 2017, exactly one month before the elections in 2017. Yes. And uh, on a Friday mm-hmm. uh, at the Mount Kenya University graduation square in Thika, in Kiambu mm-hmm. County. Mm-hmm. Then after a period of about uh, eight months, that was in from August to April 2018. The next year, yes. That was when now my former, the, the station that gave me the, the internship top, opportunity yes. had called me back. Mm-hmm. So from April 2018 until 2021, mm-hmm. in August, yes. that's when I left and joined another station mm-hmm. and then uh, had served uh, in my a former workplace for about 11 months mm-hmm. before I joined Royal Media Services. Right. In between, of course, I'll cite uh, the opportunities, mm-hmm. um, the challenges, mm-hmm. uh, but I must say it's a, a journey that uh, is, uh, has been well engineered in the sense that uh, despite some mm-hmm. of uh, the hiccups there and here, mm-hmm. here and there, mm-hmm. I live the purpose and uh, the main goal that I had, which is a gold standard, as I said earlier, which yes. I set. Mm-hmm. And I think from, from your journey, the one thing that really stands out is the fact that you went for internship and then decided to volunteer. Yeah. And that rarely happens because people just assume you go for internship and then you go to, um, you graduate and then the workforce is open for you. What would you tell someone who is currently, one, um, trying to get an internship, two, is thinking that the only way this works is you graduate and get a job. Well, it, it isn't easy. I mean, but it depends on what you want. Mm-hmm. I had uh, a set goal that must be achieved. Not by whichever way necessary, but with the uh, professional guidance yes. and uh, the necessary measures that have been put in place. Mm-hmm. So it isn't easy working uh, for more than six months. No, it's not. As an intern. It really isn't. And then uh, you know about uh, the money aspect and the mm-hmm. the value in the shilling that is in your pocket. Yes. But uh, if then you can sacrifice that, why not? Mm-hmm. And, and and attain the bigger goal. It all depends with the sacrifice that you intend to do right. for what you love most. I mean, there are many other things that we do in life mm-hmm. that we sacrifice for, mm-hmm. and we get to attain the ultimate objective, which is the goal. Yes. And I think therefore that uh, what. Uh, many of uh, the students and the learners who are at the moment doing this course mm-hmm. uh, have to understand is that uh, in, and in life generally that there are instances that where in life you stop mm-hmm. and uh, ponder about sacrificing one thing to get to the other mm-hmm. and that is what I exactly did and I have uh, absolutely no regrets about mm-hmm. it was uh, the perfect ladder uh, to the next level yes. And then after graduation, um, the same media house called me for the job opportunity mm-hmm. where I worked for between April 2018 and, so. and in August 2021 before I left. And uh, it, 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 it is then the gateway mm-hmm. to what you want in life. So what do you want to sacrifice to get to where you want? Mm-hmm. And the sacrifice was absolutely worth it. Very, very necessary and valid. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people over the period of time have likened you to Hussein Muhammad. Mm. What's your thoughts on that? 
Well, the spokesperson of the set house yes. who said we share the same faith, mm -hmm. we share profession, yes. and uh, uh, to some extent uh, we had interacted mm -hmm. for about uh, three to six months. That is in 2017, mm -hmm. after I graduated. Yes. Uh, we used to play football together. Mm -hmm. Hussein is a football fanatic. Mm -hmm. He is uh, enthusiastic about uh, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hold him in high esteem as a professional colleague mm -hmm. uh, who, made, who made a mark in the profession mm -hmm. and uh, who currently is serving as the spokesperson of State House yes. and who, at the height of his career, I had uh, inspired many, mm -hmm. many, many who are studying journalism or are even within the profession. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I respect him as a professional colleague and uh, a colleague who also achieved the limits of this profession and having uh, of course uh, read his story largely through the media yes. uh, when uh, he hung his boots at uh, a citizen television mm -hmm. in october 2019 yes. about uh, the life journey that he had mm -hmm. is uh, a man i can describe as a gentleman a go-getter and uh, so humble to the extent of uh, uh, talking to the everyday person and has no limits to his laughter. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely true. So tell us about the call, the call to move from where you were to come to RMS. Mm -hmm. How was that? Well, a lot happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, in under 72 hours time, mm -hmm. suddenly everything flipped. Yes. Between 11th of July and the 14th mm -hmm. of July this year. Mm -hmm. Because the beauty about it is that uh, I prayed that uh, the elections in 2022 to open frontiers, yes. new frontiers, mm -hmm. because new challenges is, is what uh, everyone seeks. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to get to an environment yes. where he founds himself in the place where he can expand his horizon expand the scope of thinking mm -hmm. and uh, his undertaking in terms of the duties. Although they are similar, but uh, different media houses have their own styles, yes. in-house styles, of mm -hmm. course. So 11th of July, I did the Nairobi presidential, Nairobi gubernatorial debate, debate which is yes. under the auspices of the uh, presidential debate secretariat. Yes. The first tier mm -hmm. that uh, had many candidates. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part about it is uh, that uh, we did with my current co-host, mm -hmm. Safin, yes. who at the time was also working with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. And I worked with the Media Max, that yes. is K24. Yeah. So I did the gubernatorial debate on the 11th mm -hmm. of uh, July. Yes. And uh, after that, then 12th, I went about my duty because I used to host the morning show at K24. And on Wednesday, I had, uh, I was part of the roundtable journalists mm -hmm. who were interviewing the chairperson of the IBC, yes. Wafula Chabukati, mm -hmm. and the chief executive officer Marjan, Hussein Marjan. Mm -hmm. But the plan for the IBC interview was mooted before the presidential debate. Yes. So my boss had directed me to actually accept that uh, I should prepare for that, keeping in mind that 11th was also the Nairobi gubernatorial debate of exercise. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the preparation process. For the two, very intense. The, the bit about it is uh, we had a team that we worked with at mm -hmm. the presidential debate uh, secretariat level. Yes. The research team had furnished us with the relevant information, the necessary documentation, mm -hmm. the fact sheets, and uh, because this was a, a media convergence exercise mm -hmm. which had brought together all the media houses the media in the houses, country absolutely. for the betterment of the people. Mm -hmm. So when I did the presidential debate, 11th, 12th, I went about my day-to-day -day activity, which was hosting the morning show. Mm -hmm. So it isn't easy working uh, for more than six months. No, it's not. As an intern. It really isn't. And then uh, you know about uh, the money aspect and the, mm -hmm. the value in the shilling that is in your pocket. Yes. But uh, if then you can sacrifice that, why not? Mm -hmm. And, and attain the bigger goal. Also, 
a representative from the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. And then I was also part of the team, but at the time I worked with the uh, K24. And uh, the impressive part about it was that uh, the collegiality. Mm -hmm. We had, we earlier on had during the day a meeting that was equally well guided by our executive editorial director, Lina Skaikai mm -hmm. and Jamila Mohammed yes. on some of the specific issues that uh, we need to address uh -huh. the commission on, yes. including the procurement process of the technology for the elections. There were court cases, of course, as to the eligibility of some candidates, especially with the case of the former Nairobi County Governor Mike Sonko. Yes. The ballot materials coming into the country, the preparedness mm -hmm. level to that effect, and uh, also there were allegations made at the time of IBC staff tampering right. with the electoral materials. Yes. And then there was the call by uh, the Azimio Lamoja One Kenya Coalition Political Party mm -hmm. on the use of the manual voter register, mm -hmm. where the Kenya Kwanza at the time, which is now in government, had objected to saying that uh, technology is a priority. And then the commission there after saying that uh, the manual register will be used. I mean, there was a lot happening. Yes concerning the election and mm -hmm. the preparedness, mm -hmm. preparedness process. So this was very timely. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started uh, the interview at about uh, 30 minutes past nine on mm -hmm. a Wednesday, mm -hmm. then you could see the level of preparedness in the have. team yes. that was there and how we had um, divided the time and the topics amongst ourselves. We covered it, absolutely. And uh, it was thereafter that uh, I received uh, appreciated calls, especially from uh, the immediate former Chief Administrative Secretary, the Minister of Trade, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable David Osiani, yes. and uh, many other Kenyans who had uh, uh, uploaded the entire exercise mm -hmm. on how we well, had uh, tackled the issues that mm -hmm. were of concern to Kenyans, mm -hmm. and in large aspects, of course, uh, shrouded in mystery. They needed an understanding and the commission coming forth to engage the media in a mm -hmm. joint production and clearing the air around some of uh, the foggy situation that uh, we had before the elections on the 9th of August. Mm -hmm. and, uh, at the time, it was some 26 days to the polling day. Yes. It was then the following day that uh, I received uh, the call that entirely changed my now coming to Royal Media Services. Mm -hmm. And it was some 16 days, that was on the 14th of July, to yes. the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me to come on board, mm -hmm. uh, of course, for tuning some of the issues here and there. Yes. But uh, I must admit that uh, uh, unexpected, but uh, uh, prayed for it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, and uh, happy that uh, I am where I am, mm -hmm. owing to the input that has largely been over time since 2018, 19, 20, 21, and then in 22, at the height of the elections, uh, then the door suddenly opening. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, an appreciation that uh, I must uh, attribute it to God and also to the phone call that I did receive on the 14th of July. Mm -hmm. And then thereafter, where I am today, of course, which is uh, the story that uh, the chapter that begins with Royal Media Services and Citizen TV. In uh -huh. So when you received this call, um, did you say, let me think about it? No. <laughs> I'll think about it, maybe. But just give me time. Or you just think, yes, immediately and moved on. In a minute, I forwarded my <laughs> CV. Immediately. In details, yeah. So it was an, a complete offer. It was, we're not suggesting. It was 100% an offer. Are you coming? The answer was yes. Actually, it was, uh, I made the determination on the debt mm -hmm. and the reporting time and day of which I chose the 1st of August. Of the next yeah. month. So it was already decided. Well, look at you. So who's the first person you called when you got this news? Well, many people, mm -hmm. uh, because I consult a lot. And, uh, <laughs> there is, uh, there is uh, a sense of blessing, may I say, a level of blessing yes. when you consult. Mm -hmm. and I extensively consulted uh, about uh, the opportunity offered at the time. Yes. Although the inevitability was that I would still sign. Eventually. There was no doubt yeah, about it. Of course. I was just seeking the opinion of uh, very close uh, uh, family and uh, friends. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, there was a general consensus yes with regards to the opportunity mm -hmm. and also some of course uh, reservations mm -hmm. but uh, the general agreement and the conclusion mm -hmm. was that uh, I should go for it and uh, it, it, personally then you see that that's now what the conversation that you normally have outside your intra yeah. level yeah then the intra conversation within me was uh, first of all thinking about it mm -hmm. um, because the pressure piled at the time was this coming at an election time the demand will be huge it's going to be insane and uh, there are some requirements that uh, you would be made immediate deployment to the bombers of Kenya mm -hmm. that is the national tallying center yes all eyes were on nearly there yes and uh, you could see that uh, I thought about it mm -hmm. and uh, I was properly guided, advised on the same mm -hmm. by, of course, uh, um, the phone caller. I wouldn't want to name him. Yes. Okay. But uh, that has been good enough in terms of guidance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say that I have absolutely no regrets about it. It's At the all. best decision of my life that I made. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how, I can't use the word disorienting because I don't think it was. The journey between you signing the paper and getting into the elections. Well, so when given the task, I, um, I, more or less, it, it was a case of uh, you being told uh, um, uh, jump, and uh, the answer would be how high, meaning uh, you are not limited. You are not, there is no limit to it. You have to do it. You have to do it for audience. And yes. the much awaiting on the part of our audiences and the viewership mm -hmm. on that very important day, a new studio, uh, the whole team for the election coverage, because we literally shelved Everything. all other programs yes. to focus on this program, which mm -hmm. is Kenya's Choice 2022, and that was purposely tailor-made for the viewers at home. Mm -hmm. And we did it on Sunday, then on Monday was uh, a day before the elections, on Tuesday when it's now the real deal started, yes. the, the test of uh, this entire uh, process. And um, from the Bombers of Kenya, which was uh, the National Talent Center of the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission, mm -hmm. in my understanding, I think the entire team delivered on the mandate that they were accorded. Yes. I, of course, was uh, with the, the likes of Nimrod, as I have mentioned, Gashuri, yes. Stephen Leto, mm -hmm. uh, we had Wahiga, yes. Lilian, Samgi mm -hmm. and the efficiency to it, which there was cooperation between the team. Mm -hmm and the timing element of it, you have to get time, get out at this time, and someone else must get in at this time. Mm -hmm. It was so easy and seamless in terms of overtime changing and the simplicity yes. with which we did it. Mm -hmm. And always when seen on TV, it looks small, looks seamless. Very. But of course, uh, there was the calling, <laughs> call. it actually was very There was freezing. a producer in your ear. Yes, freezingly called at the Bombers of Kenya. Yes. The instructions, uh, because you hear that um, Someone else must give a live link from Wasingisho County where we had Chemutai going. Yes. And across the country, Martin Muneno was in Nyeri. Mm -hmm. We had our own Gatete in Jorogo who was going around Nairobi County. Yes. We had um, Gashuri who was in Kiambu County mm -hmm. uh, at the home county of the former president where he was with him at the polling station. Yes. And the many other reporters that we have across the country who are giving the upbeat assessment and mm -hmm. the minute by minute information to our audiences. Now you can imagine that pressure of interchange between uh, Cynthia Ayub and uh, say Gashuri Leto. Yes. And, and while you still are keeping time on this progress, the pressure was a lot, mm -hmm. but certainly we delivered on the mandate. That I agree, you actually did. You did a fantastic job. So now that we're done with the elections, now it's just back to mm -hmm. normal um, operations in the newsroom, doing your stories. So how was that transition? As you said, yours was baptism by fire, mm -hmm. and then now you're back to now learning how actually things work. How was that? Easy. Easy. It's just uh, a matter of uh, learning mm -hmm. the tools. I mean, uh, the news gathering process. Go out to the field, a presser, or your own story, an interview, come mm -hmm. back. I'm sure that uh, you do it to the guidance of the editors, the video editors, mm -hmm. and then thereafter you package your story, and it's all done. But in between the process, of course, uh, you have to understand uh, the using of uh, the Octopus software that we use for news, mm -hmm. the editor approving your story, 
uh, has been easy mm -hmm. and not um, a such difficult or need that it is posed it right. and uh, therefore it wasn't uh, the, the, the steep slope that mm -hmm. many might have uh, comprehended or thought uh, though new but uh, <laughs> it has been easy and smooth in terms of getting how the workflow and uh, what we normally use in terms of getting the work done okay so now we've done a lot about your work mm. uh are you away from work away from work um a footballer uh -huh. yes i play football right and uh, actually i'm playing football tonight uh -huh. um i'm enthusiastic about football whether by watching mm -hmm. or playing and normally this happens during the night because uh, uh, we now, nowadays they, they are the indoor arenas. Yes. Seven aside is well lit. Yeah. yeah. So I pass time there, and of course they are colleagues. So you're a player, yeah, you're yeah, a goalkeeper. Yeah. What are you? Um, seven aside has no such really lay down procedures. You can be a goalkeeper, you can be a defender, you can be a striker. The team has to cooperate, uh -huh. so there has to be <laughs> the, the teamwork element. Mm -hmm. If one player is uh, causes deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, you stand to... to lose the match. Yeah. So it has to be all around. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ball retention aspect of it, the mark man marking aspect of it, mm -hmm. and then uh, because uh, you see, you're playing within confines of um, a very small... very small space. Yes. So imagine now going around, going around. So you're doing all then, things at yeah, the same time. At the same time. Save for being the goalkeeper. Yeah, but it's very engaging, mm -hmm. uh, healthy for the mind, mm -hmm. and of course the body. Right. So a footballer, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Coming from uh, a polygamous household, right. I cherish my family, mm -hmm. my nephews, and my extended family members. Mm -hmm. I am distant uh, in a family of uh, about uh, 19 in total. Wow. Yeah, so about number 12. Incredible. So my elder brothers consider me as young, but uh -huh. uh, I must admit that uh, <laughs> I am equally Mm, up to the task. Now. Uh -huh. uh, so family is also important. Yes. I also engage myself mm -hmm. with uh, reading, mm -hmm. researching, right. making sense of my environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invest a lot of time mm -hmm. in seeking information. Right. It interests me. Mm -hmm. I, have I have not yet established why, but I know that uh, it's important. Mm -hmm. And uh, came to that uh, realization that information is key mm -hmm. in the media industry. Keeping abreast of it is very important. It Therefore, always has been. Books, uh -huh. another important um, exercise that I love. Mm -hmm. uh, although you might not have all the time to read some uh, very, very many books, mm -hmm. but at times it's important that uh, we make time for books in the essence that uh, we learn a lot both from the journeys of many right from what many have penned down mm -hmm. uh, from their experiences and uh, that also shapes your thinking and worldview of events yes it does and uh, therefore that's me beyond that uh, uh, is uh, I, I i regard myself as also religious mm -hmm. i pray to the almighty god yes for good health mm -hmm which is important mm -hmm. because it's well. And uh, beyond having a roof over your head, a meal mm -hmm. and or meals, mm -hmm. and then you have somewhere to sleep. Mm -hmm. I think that's enough in life. That's all you need. That's enough. It's a simple life. That, that's my principle in life. So I'm assuming you're a minimalist in your life. Okay, contented. I'm content with what I have. Mm -hmm. I am positive about life. I'm always optimistic. Mm -hmm. I look forward to more success and progress mm -hmm. and I pray to the Almighty God for guidance and of course my fellow colleagues who I hold in high esteem. Mm -hmm. From your description of what it is, yes. uh, of who you are away from work, you're from a polygamous family, mm -hmm. right? Is that something you also want to continue with? Well, that is an idea that uh, is largely a practice within the pastoralist community. Right. Of course, me being a byproduct, mm -hmm. and uh, there are many situations that normally allow that, and uh, they are very specific measures, mm -hmm. and uh, what I may term as the regulations. <coughs> Number one, from two perspectives: right. culturally mm -hmm. and uh, religiously. Right. Culture in the sense that uh, 
there is a there are sort of what I may term as flimsy excuses given by some people as regards polygamous. Yeah. And then the religious bit is that while you are allowed to marry as many as four wives, yeah. which is the limit, there are certain conditions that you must meet. For example, providing for the family, security, the man who is the head of the family, yeah. and the responsibilities that are attached to that. So there are situations that normally allow. And the, the, the beauty about it is that uh, you are made up by more than 42 ethnic communities. And th that is what makes Kenya what it is. The identity that we get from that, the identity that we drive from the, our, our flag, which is made up by black, red, and the green color, the agriculture part of it, the color which is our black, the, the black which is our color, and also the red blood that was shed during the fight for independence. That is the beauty about it. The beauty in the sense that Kenya is a conglomerate of many communities who live peacefully and no one even now thinks and, uh, that we are away from an election period. You look at the maturity and the civility of the Kenyan people in how they have exercised restraint, in how they have exercised maturity, in how now the concern about them is about the food they put on the table, education, healthcare and decent lives. That's what they demand from the leadership of the country. And um, I can tell them to their faces that uh, as a professional in the, in, in, the, in the profession, that if an opportunity comes my way in holding to account those who are in power as to what they want to attain, and these are universal healthcare, education, infrastructure, this is what any Kenyan needs. It doesn't have tribal inclination. There's no tribal belonging to it. There's no tribal attachment to it. It's a universal need for all humans. Whatever subscription in terms of religion you have, your ethnic belonging, therefore I want to tell them with an assurity and a guarantee that whoever comes who is a policymaker, these many aspects that you want in life must be held to account because it's the same people who are paying taxes for this country to run. Remember that uh, we might not have as uh, large deposits of natural resources, for example, as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We might not have as much resources as the Gulf nations who are big exporters of oil, in this case the Gulf states, the Saudis, the Qataris and the others. What we have as Kenyans is the human resource that we export out of the country. And when they go, they are the ambassadors, teachers, I mean medical pro uh, professionals. We have seen nurses going to the UK to serve in the NHS. We have um, engineers who have built, who have made landmark buildings in many countries across the world. We have professional journalists. We have many others who are across the world and they are the ambassadors. Then that is the beauty about this nation. And I think the glue that holds this country together is unity. And I pray that uh, this in the foreseeable future stands. And I pray that uh, in uh, the power of the almighty God, that this country remains stable and unified. I am in awe of your answers. It's very incredible and well thought out. And thank you so much for making time to also come and sit with us. Uh, especially on a Friday and I, and I know this is your day off technically, so thank you thank very, you very much, we appreciate it. And I, I look forward to this conversation again in about five years, inshallah. Five years as well. Absolutely. Five years is a long time. It is a long time. Yeah, who knew? Do happen in between. Who knew? A lot of things could happen. That's why I said in five years we'll touch base, just, just to catch up on where we are. Thank you very much.